Kirsten Lee Cinema was born in Tucson, Arizona, on July 12, 1976, to Marilyn and Dan Cinema. She is of Frisian descent. Her great-great-grandfather Lou Jacob Cinema immigrated at a young age with his father Jacob Jan Cinema to the United States in 1867 from the village of Bitgum, in the Dutch province of Friesland. They came to Sioux City, Iowa, and later her great-great-grandfather settled in Twin Falls, Idaho, where her great-grandfather Jacob Cinema and grandfather Gerald Cinema were brought up. Her grandfather relocated to Phoenix, Arizona, where her father, Dan Cinema, was born in 1949. Kirsten has two siblings, an older brother and younger sister. Her father was an attorney. Her parents divorced when she was a child and her mother, who had custody of the children, remarried. With her siblings, mother, and stepfather, Cinema moved to Defuniac Springs, Florida, a small town in the Panhandle. When her stepfather lost his job and the bank foreclosed on their home, the family lived for three years in an abandoned gas station. Cinema has said that for two years they had no toilet or electricity while living there. Cinema was raised as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Cinema graduated as valedictorian from Walton High School in Defuniac Springs at age 16 and went on to earn her BA from Brigham Young University in 1995 at age 18. She left the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints after graduating from BYU. Kirsten returned to Arizona in 1995. Cinema worked as a social worker from 1995 to 2002 in the Phoenix metropolitan area's Washington Elementary School District and received a Master of Social Work degree from Arizona State University in 1999. In 2004 she earned a JD degree from Arizona State University College of Law and became a criminal defense lawyer. In 2003 Cinema became an adjunct professor teaching master's level policy and grant writing classes at Arizona State University School of Social Work and an adjunct business law professor at Arizona Summit Law School, formerly known as Phoenix School of Law. In 2008, Cinema completed the Harvard University John F. Kennedy School of Government program for senior executives in state and local government as a David Bonnet LGBTQ Victory Institute Leadership Fellow. In 2012 she earned a Ph.D. in Justice Studies, also from Arizona State. Cinema began her political career in the Arizona Green Party before joining the Arizona Democratic Party in 2004. In 2000, Cinema worked on Ralph Nader's presidential campaign. In 2001 and 2002, she ran for local elected offices as an independent and lost. Kirsten had organized 15 anti-war rallies by the time the Iraq War began. She also opposed the war in Afghanistan. During a February 15, 2003 protest in Patriot Square Park in Phoenix, a group led by Cinema distributed flyers portraying a U.S. service member as a skeleton inflicting U.S. terror in Iraq and the Middle East. In a 2003 opinion piece, Cinema declared that Presidents Ronald Reagan and George H. W. Bush were the real Saddam and Osama lovers. When asked on a local radio show whether she would oppose someone joining the Taliban and fighting on its behalf, Cinema responded, Fine, I don't care if you want to do that, go ahead. During 2005 and 2006, Cinema co hosted a radio show with 9 11 truther Jeff Farias. Cinema first ran for the Arizona House of Representatives in 2002, as an independent affiliated with the Arizona Green Party. She finished in last place in a five-candidate field, receiving 8% of the vote. Kirsten joined the Democratic Party in 2004. That year, Cinema and David Lujan won the Democratic primaries for Arizona's 15th district, with 37% of the vote for Cinema and 34% for Lujan over incumbent representative Wally Strawn. Kirsten was subsequently re-elected three times with over 30% of the vote. In 2009 and 2010 Cinema was an assistant minority leader for the Democratic Caucus of the Arizona House of Representatives. In 2010, Cinema was elected to the Arizona Senate, defeating Republican Bob Thomas, 63% to 37%. In 2006, Cinema told a radio host that she was the most liberal member of the Arizona State Legislature. 
Also in 2006 she sponsored a bill urging the adoption of the DREAM Act and co-chaired Arizona Together, the statewide campaign that defeated Proposition 107, which would have banned the recognition of same-sex marriage and civil unions in Arizona. In 2006 Kirsten was asked about new feminism, and responded, these women who act like staying at home, leeching off their husbands or boyfriends, and just cashing the checks is some sort of feminism because they're choosing to live that life. That's bullshit. I mean, what the fuck are we really talking about here? After facing criticism, Cinema apologized and said the interview format was intended to be a light-hearted spoof. I was raised by a stay-at-home mom, she said. So, she did a pretty good job with me. Cinema campaigned against Proposition 107, a referendum to ban the recognition of same-sex marriage and civil unions in Arizona. In 2008, she led the campaign against Proposition 102, another referendum that would have banned the recognition of same-sex marriage in Arizona. Proposition 102 was approved with 56% of the vote in the general election on November 4, 2008. Cinema chaired a coalition called Protect Arizona's Freedom, which defeated Ward Connerly's goal to place an initiative on the state ballot that would eliminate equal opportunity programs. In June 2009, Kirsten was one of 32 state legislators appointed by President Barack Obama to the White House Health Reform Task Force, which helped shape the Affordable Care Act. Thanks in part to her hard work in improving the bill, she was invited to attend the Obamacare bill signing at the White House in March 2010. In 2010, Cinema sponsored a bill to give in state tuition to veterans, it was held in committee and did not receive a vote. Also in 2010, Cinema was named one of Time Magazine's 40 Under 40. The Center for Inquiry gave Cinema its award for the advancement of science and reason in public policy in 2011. In June 2011 Kirsten Cinema said she was considering running for the U.S. House of Representatives in 2012. She lived in the same Phoenix neighborhood as incumbent Democratic Congressman Ed Pastor, but was adamant that she would not challenge another Democrat in a primary. On January 3, 2012, Cinema announced her bid for Congress, in the 9th Congressional District. The district had previously been the 5th, represented by freshman Republican David Schweikert, it contained 60% of the old 5 Tis territory. Schweikert had been drawn into the 6th district, the old 3rd district, and sought re-election there. Although Cinema was not required to resign her state senate seat under Arizona's resign to run laws, she did so on the same day that she announced her candidacy. On August 28, 2012, Cinema won the three-way Democratic primary with nearly 42% of the vote. Her opponents, State Senator David Shapira and former Arizona Democratic Party Chairman Andre Cherney, a former speechwriter in the Clinton administration, each finished with less than 30% of the vote. In the general election, Cinema ran against Republican nominee Vernon Parker, the former mayor of Paradise Valley. She was endorsed by the Arizona Republic. The campaign was described as a nasty, bitterly fought race that featured millions of dollars in attack ads. Parker ran campaign ads that accused Cinema of being an anti-American hippie, who practiced pagan rituals. The Republican-aligned outside group American Future Fund spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on attack ads against Cinema. When her religious views were raised as an issue, her campaign said that she simply believes in a secular approach to government. The November 6 election was initially too close to call, because Arizona election authorities failed to count more than 25% of the votes on election day. Cinema held a narrow lead over Parker, while provisional and absentee ballots were still being counted. On November 12, when it was apparent that Cinema's lead was too large for Parker to overcome, the Associated Press called the race for Cinema. Once all ballots were counted, Cinema won by 4.1 percentage points, over 10,000 votes. Libertarian Powell Gamill finished third with 6.64% of the votes. When she took office on January 3, 2013, she became only the second Anglo-Democrat to represent the Valley of the Sun in over three decades. The first was Harry Mitchell, who represented the then 5th District from 2007 to 2011. Cinema is the first openly bisexual person and second openly LGBT woman, after Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin, elected to the United States Congress. 
Cinema Kirsten ran for re-election in 2014, and was unopposed in the Democratic primary, which took place on August 26, 2014. She faced Republican Wendy Rogers in the general election. According to Roll Call, Cinema billed herself as bipartisan. This move was seen as a response to her district's voting pattern. It was drawn as a fair fight district, and President Barack Obama won the district by four points in 2012. In September 2014 she was endorsed for re-election by the United States Chamber of Commerce, becoming one of five Democrats to be endorsed by the Chamber in the 2014 congressional election cycle. She was re-elected with approximately 55% of the vote, beating GOP nominee Wendy Rogers by 13 points. Unopposed in her primary in 2016, Kirsten won the general election with 61.1% of the vote. Her opponent, Republican nominee Dave Giles, received 38.9%. On September 28, 2017, Cinema officially announced her candidacy for the Class 1 United States Senate seat held by Republican incumbent Jeff Flake, who declined to seek re-election the next month. In March 2018 Kirsten donated to charity $33,800 in campaign contributions she had received from Ed Buck, a prominent Democratic donor who came under scrutiny after a homeless escort died of a drug overdose at his California home in 2017. She had previously donated to charity $53,400 in campaign contributions from people with ties to Backpage, a website that was seized by the United States Department of Justice after it was accused of knowingly accepting ads for sex with underage girls. Federal Election Commission filings released in April 2018 showed Cinema had raised over $8.2 million, more than the three leading Republican primary contenders combined. During the 2018 campaign Kirsten refused to debate her competitor in the Democratic primary, Deidre Aboud, an attorney and community activist. Cinema won the August Democratic primary for the Senate seat. Her Republican opponent in the general election was fellow Arizona U.S. Representative and eventual Senate colleague Martha McSally. Cinema received the endorsement of the Human Rights Campaign. On November 12, many news sources called the U.S. Senate race for cinema, and the Republican nominee, Martha McSally, conceded. Kirsten Cinema was sworn in with the 116th United States Congress on January 3, 2019. Cinema is the first woman to represent Arizona in the United States Senate. She is also the first Democrat elected to represent Arizona in the chamber since Dennis DeCancina, who held her current seat from 1977 to 1995. Cinema was sworn in as a member of the U.S. Senate on January 3, 2019. During the oath of office ceremony, led by Vice President Mike Pence, she decided to be sworn in not on the traditional Bible, but on copies of the United States Constitution and the Constitution of Arizona. She is the senior U.S. Senator from Arizona, the junior U.S. Senator for Arizona is Democrat Mark Kelly. Kelly defeated Cinema's 2018 general election opponent, Martha McSally, who was appointed to fill the Senate seat vacated upon the resignation of Senator John Kyle, who was appointed to fill the Senate seat vacated upon the death of Senator John McCain. On February 14, 2019, Cinema voted to confirm William Barr as Attorney General. On March 5, 2021, Kirsten Cinema voted against a nationwide increase of the minimum wage to $15 an hour, as proposed by Senator Bernie Sanders as part of the COVID-19 American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. While doing so, she carried a Lululemon bag which contained a cake for Senate staffers, which critics tied to the Let Them Eat Cake quotation often attributed to Marie Antoinette. Cinema has been described as a conservative or moderate Democrat. According to National Journal's 2013 vote ratings, her votes place her near the center of their liberal conservative scale. The National Journal gave her a composite ideology score of 57% liberal and 43% conservative. According to the bipartisan index created by the Lugar Center and the McCourt School of Public Policy, Kirsten Cinema was the sixth most bipartisan member of the U.S. House of Representatives during the first session of the 115th United States Congress. She has cited U.S. Senator Joe Manchin, a Democrat from West Virginia, as a role model. She was one of the most conservative Democrats in the House of Representatives during her tenure. In 2015 and 2016, Kirsten did not vote for Nancy Pelosi for Speaker of the House. 
In 2015, she voted with the majority of her party 73% of the time. The conservative group Americans for Prosperity gives cinema a lifetime 27% rating and the conservative Goldwater Institute gave her a 35% in 2010 when she was a state legislator. The Progressive Americans for Democratic Action gave her a 60% liberal quotient. In 2017, she voted in line with President Donald Trump's position approximately half the time. According to 538, as of April 2020, Cinema voted in line with Trump's position on legislation about 53% of the time. As a result, the Arizona Democratic Party suggested censuring her. But after delaying the vote and watering down the resolution from a censure to an advisement, it was ultimately tabled. In the House of Representatives, Cinema was a member of the Blue Dog Coalition and the Problem Solvers Caucus. Cinema supports abortion rights. Asked about Roe v. Wade, Cinema indicated that the ruling should not be overturned and that she supports a woman's right to choose. She has been endorsed by Emily's List. She has a lifetime 100% rating from Planned Parenthood, which is pro-choice, and a 0% rating from the pro-life organization Campaign for Working Families as of 2020. On February 5, 2019, Kirsten Cinema voted for a bill that would make improvements to certain defense and security assistance provisions, authorize the appropriation of funds to Israel, and reauthorize the United States Jordan Defense Cooperation Act of 2015. On March 13, 2019, she voted to remove the United States Armed Forces from hostilities in the Republic of Yemen that have not been authorized by Congress. In February 2019, Cinema was one of 20 senators to sponsor the Employer Participation in Repayment Act, enabling employers to contribute up to $5,250 to their employees' student loans. In 2019, Cinema was one of three Democrats to join all Republicans in voting against the Green New Deal, a stimulus program that aims to address climate change and economic inequality, while most other Democrats voted present. In April 2019, Cinema was one of three Democrats who voted with Republicans to confirm David Bernhardt, a former oil executive, as Secretary of the Interior Department. On February 12, 2019, Cinema voted along with the whole Senate for the Natural Resources Management Act, which provides for the management of the natural resources of the United States. On March 26, along with two Democrats and an independent from Maine, she voted against the Green New Deal. On February 12, 2021, Cinema became the second Democratic senator after Joe Manchin to announce her opposition to including a $15 per hour minimum wage as part of a COVID relief bill. On March 5, 2021, Cinema voted against a debate on the minimum wage proposition. This is in direct opposition from Mark Kelly, the junior Arizona state senator, who supports a $15 per hour minimum wage. Confusion and backlash from critics rose after a tweet from 2014 resurfaced, where Cinema calls raising the minimum wage a no-brainer. Cinema favors gun control measures such as requiring background checks on gun sales between private citizens at gun shows, and requiring a license for gun possession. In 2016 the National Rifle Association NRA, which opposes gun regulations, gave Cinema a 29% rating. In 2018, the NRA gave Cinema a 33% score and the Gun Owners of America gave her a 17% rating. Cinema voted against repealing the Affordable Care Act, but has called for reforms to the law. In a 2012 congressional campaign debate, she said the health care law wasn't perfect, and that in Congress she would work to amend it to make it work effectively. Cinema voted to delay the imposition of fines on those who did not purchase insurance in 2014. She also voted to repeal the medical device tax and for the Keep Your Health Plan Act of 2013. Cinema Co. sponsored the Southwest Border Security Threat Assessment Act HR 4482, a bill that calls for border threat analysis of terrorism, smuggling, and human trafficking every five years. On March 14, 2019, Cinema voted against Trump's national emergency declaration on border security. On February 4, 2021, Cinema voted against providing COVID-19 pandemic financial support to undocumented immigrants. As did all other Democratic senators and a few other senators, Cinema voted to convict Donald Trump in both his first and second impeachment trials. 
Cinema married, and later divorced, her BYU classmate Blake Dane. Cinema has been reported to be the only non-theist member of Congress, although she herself has rejected such labels. She has credited the government, her church, her teachers, and her family for helping her climb out of poverty. On November 17, 2013, Cinema completed an Ironman triathlon in a little more than 15 hours. Cinema was the second active member of Congress, behind Senator Jeff Merkley, to finish a long-distance triathlon, and the first to complete an Ironman-branded race. On December 25, 2013, Cinema summited Mount Kilimanjaro. During the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, Cinema was noted for her use of colorful wigs, an unusual choice in the Senate. Her spokeswoman Hannah Hurley explained that Cinema wore them to emphasize the importance of social distancing, by wearing wigs, she could obviate the need to go to a hair salon. We hope you have enjoyed reading Kirsten Cinema biography, and we hope it's inspired you to new discoveries. If you liked our video, please like and leave a comment. Also, please subscribe to our channel to always be the first to know about new videos.